um, we will be recording this um, session. So if anybody has a concern, kindly let us know. Um, we have started because of the fact that we have unfortunately other commitments. The discussion this morning is about leadership and women. Now, my first slide, I'm starting to, to, uh, to, to, to ask the question, how do we define leadership? In the first place, leadership can be found in families, amongst friends, in communities, and inside and outside organizations. It can be with or without management responsibilities. In other words, it can be exercised by individuals by individuals at any level. For the purpose of this discussion, I want to focus on positional leadership. People who occupy positions of power that are recognized and rewarded in observable ways. I've identified two definitions of leadership. The first one that you see on the screen um, is the one by Miles Monroe, who is a very who was a very charismatic and a religious leader and did a lot of research on leadership. And he defines leadership as the capacity to influence others through inspiration, motivated by passion, generated by vision, produced by a conviction, ignited by a purpose. The next uh, definition that I have identified is from a more business-like uh, person, John Cotter, who defines leadership as creating a vision of the future and strategies for producing the changes needed to achieve that vision, aligning people around the vision and motivating them to overcome barriers and produce the changes needed to achieve the vision. So if you look at these two definitions, uh, you would see that there are certain words that's repeated in both um, definitions. More importantly, the fact that you have to have other people to follow your leadership. You have to motivate such people. You have to inspire such people. And very importantly, as you continue to achieve this vision. In other words, you are on your way to achieve something. If leadership, if leadership is, as it seems, so easy, I just want to check at this point, can everybody hear me? Can you just indicate in the chat box? Because I didn't test my voice, I'm a bit concerned. If leadership is, as it seems, so simple according to these two definitions, why in some circles does it seem it is for men only? No, it is not for men only. As you can see on the screen right now, uh, there are beautiful pictures of beautiful women leaders. Because throughout history, from the pharaohs of Egypt to the queens of in England, Women rules, rulers are found in nearly every culture, every religion, and in any time period. So it is important to note that leadership is not only for men. So I've highlighted these few women. Uh, you can see there Indira Gandhi, the first and, may I say, the only female prime minister ever for India. Uh, we have Joan San Suu Kyi, who was the voice for human rights and freedom in Burma. Then we have the first and last queen of Hawaii. And last picture I will talk about last. And in the second row, we have a very impressive woman, in, in my view, in this uh, field that up to today people are saying technology and sciences are not for women. But this woman, Marie Kari, who won two Nobel Peace Prizes. Her research contributed to the development of X-rays. And she battled all her career with sexism from her 
from her uh, male counterparts. Um, Emily Parker is the political activist and leader for the British suffragette movement, where they advocated for women's rights to vote. And then next to her, we have Eugene Charles, the Prime Minister of Dominica. And the common traits among these leaders are that they stood up for civil rights, they were political leaders. Um, but most of them were silenced. But they didn't give up silence by either assassination or by um, putting them in, under house arrest or exiling them. Um, but they didn't allow to be silenced. The last one that I didn't talk about in the top uh, right-hand corner uh, is an interesting example that I took from uh, the Christian history from the Bible. Many people who know the Bible uh, would know about Moses. Well, many people talk about Moses led the people from Egypt. He was a great leader. And together with Moses, there was Aaron. But many people from the Christian movement, from the Christian religion, do not realize that the Bible actually talks about three leaders within that context. There was Moses, there was Aaron, and there was Miriam. Miriam is a woman who was a leader alongside her male counterparts. So with that statement, I want to say that women do not only lead, or cannot only lead, or are not only made to lead, but they are also made to be equal to men. Which brings us to the next slide. Just last week, the IPU and the UN Women, they launched the Women in Politics Map 2017. Now, this map, uh, unfortunately, you cannot see all the details, but we have put this out on our social media last week. You will find it on our Twitter. So if you are interested to go to that link and go in, look at the map in detail. The link is on the Girls Inspired uh, Twitter account. This map shows a slight drop in the number of countries with the women, with women head of states. It shows a slow increase in the global average of women in parliament, and it shows a significant increase in women speakers of parliament. The IPU Secretary General said of this map, that the power is still in the hands of men and that equal representation in positions of power is a fundamental precondition for effective and accountable democracy. Together with that map, on the day that they launched it, the IPU and UN Women put out a press statement and in the statement they said, Women's political empowerment and equal access to leadership positions at all levels are, interesting, fundamental to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, we had a webinar a few months ago on Sustainable Development Goals, and we know that this is indeed very true. Because there are certain goals, Goal 4, Goal 5, Goal 7, that speaks directly to women and what their contribution is in achieving sustainable development goals. So women's equal access to leadership positions at all levels are fundamental to achieving the SDGs and a more e equal world. With limited growth in women's representation, advancement of gender equality and the success of the SDGs are indeed jeopardized. That's the statement from the IPU and you. UN women, and I totally concur with that. Now, what are the advantages of, of women leaders? Why are they saying this in the previous slide that women's empowerment and equal access is fundamental to achieving sustainable development goals? Uh, you will see from, uh, from the literature that uh, I read the last one first on these three bullet points. It says, companies with at least one woman on the board had a higher return on investment 
than companies with no women on their board. This comes from a research paper in 2012. So this aligns to what was just mentioned in the press segment of the IPU and UN Women about women's imperative role in making sure that we achieve the SDGs. But if we go to the earlier two statements there from USAID, you will read that when 10% more girls go to school, a country's GDP increases on average by 3%. When women have the same amount of land as men, they say there is over 10% increase in crop yields. So these are very telling statistics. And these are coming from reports that researched the influence of women in leadership or the impact it has when we educate women. So what are the skills that's needed uh, in leadership that is directly aligned to women's uh, when I say characteristics or how women are put together. There are four things that I put there. First one, communication, then networking, relationship building, and flexibility. Communication is part and parcel of a woman. A woman, as within the family context, is the person that is the main thread of communication. If, if you just look at your own family context, um, if your mother wants to give you an instruction, she can just gesture, and by that gesture, you know exactly what she wants you to do, whether she wants you to keep quiet or to do the dishes. Uh, so strong communication trait we have inherently as women. So that is a very important skill that is part of leadership. So why not use it as women? Networking. As a, woman, as a woman, we know that within the family context, it will be the mothers that will bring the families together. It will be the mothers that send out the messages. Relationship building is closely uh, connected to that. And finally, flexibility. We all know as females that we are multitaskers. We can do many things at once. We can take care of our babies while we talk to somebody on the phone, while we at the same time take care of the cooking and maybe sometimes burn ourselves at the oven, like I regularly do. So if women does have the inbuilt skills to become leaders, why are we not becoming? What prevents us from becoming leaders? I, there's many reasons, there's many reasons. I've just highlighted two. The one is bias and stereotypes, and the other one is work-life balance. I want to start with work-life life balance and say many work uh, environments are not conducive for women, uh, for women to take up leadership while they are at the same time caregivers. Uh, because if I am, for instance, still nursing my baby, will my office allow me to come in later or to go earlier? Will they allow me flexible hours? So that work-life balance is something that many women are juggling with, and in the end, they would prefer to take care of the family than to build a career. So. Things need to change to allow women to live out their leadership capabilities while still taking care of their families. Then there is the issue of bias and stereotypes. Stereotypes mean it's a cognitive shortcut that categorizes people on the bias of characteristics of such as gender. So people may say, yes, she has a baby, she will not apply for, for that job. So they're just stereotyping you already. Um, so there, there is that bias, uh, also that leadership styles of women are different, uh, women do things differently. Now I can tell you as a person being in such a position for many years, yes it may be true, 
but it is not necessarily true that it can make a difference in the outputs. In fact, if it has to make a difference, I would say it will be over exceeding as a women leader if your style is different than underperforming. Uh, what is a problem for me in this bias and stereotype is the fact that women undersell themselves. We, we will not go out there and say, um, I am the strong woman, I can do this. We are very humble and we are very modest. And research shows that, in fact, there is a research paper um, from, I left it in my office now, which tells us that in a research, the men would, they would praise themselves while women didn't do that. And the researchers knew at that point when they did those interviews that these women are as good or even better as these men. So women should show that they believe in themselves. So because of these biases, women are not always valued in their teams. Next slide. What are the characteristics of a leader? This is to me a very important slide. Uh, and I have enlisted uh, quite a number of, of characteristics uh, of characteristics of, of a leader. And I want to just elaborate on a few of them not on all of them. The first one is focus. We all know that it has been said leadership is making sometimes unpopular decisions. So that is part of the truth. But this actually means because of that, you have to focus. Because if you make an unpopular decision, it is true that people will talk about it and people will not be happy. But if you are not focused, you will get distracted. So if you are a leader, you cannot major in minor issues. You have to stay focused on the major issues. And if you have taken an unpopular decision, you take ownership with it and you make it work. The next one I want to, to highlight is the issue of confidence. A leader instills confidence and followership by having a clear vision and showing empathy in being a strong coach. Remember the first two the first slide where the two definitions were about what leadership is. Both of those uh, uh, um, writers identified the vision. So the leader should instill confidence so that there is this clear vision to the followership. So that the people that you lead, they know exactly what it is that we want to achieve. Transparency to me is a very important characteristic. As a leader, the only way that we can engender trust and buy in from our team and from our colleagues is to be authentic. In other words, what they see is what they get. We cannot be Today, because the weather is, you know, it's wet and cold outside now, I'm also like that. Tomorrow it's sunny, so I'm happy. So the followership should know that this is our leader, this is how she is. They should be able to read you because of your consistent and transparent behavior. behavior. Integrity. Uh, it's a direct reflection of the values that we embody as, as leaders to so focus on doing what is right instead of needing to be right all the time. So as leaders, we can be wrong and our followers can advise us and we should sometimes accept that, that not sometimes, we should accept that sometimes we can be wrong. So we should focus on that and that is integrity. Inspiration to me is critical to be a good leader. We are not self-made but we are driven. On my journey as a leader, many people inspired me, they gave me advice, advice and I, I was fueled by my personal beliefs and my internal drive and passion. So that is why I'm always willing sometimes People don't ask, but I'm always willing to motivate and, and, and offer advice to friends and colleagues and family. 
because I know the power of inspiration, because I know that those people that I have met on my journey who inspired me, allowed me to stand on their shoulders to see far. And so if people can stand on my shoulders to see far as a leader, I should also allow them and prepare to do that. Uh, the next one I want to talk with you briefly about is passion. You must love what you do as a leader. In order to, order to be truly successful at something, you must actually obsess about this thing and it must consume you because you love what you are doing. So if you lead by such an example, your followers will not have a choice but following you. So there are all of these still to come. But I just want to talk about one last one because I see my time is running out and it is empowerment. To build an overachieving team, like I think we manage with the Girls Inspire team, we need to delegate responsibility and authority. We need to allow our team here at call, our team in the regions, to do what they have to do and to take the responsibility for it. As a leader, you cannot run the show all the time. And a perfect analogy that I can bring to the table in this is like, if you look at an orchestra, in an orchestra, there are many people playing different instruments, each one doing his and her own thing. But when they stand on the stage and they start and they deliver, you hear one beautiful sound of an award winning performance because there is that power within each person which was brought together and that is what a leader should do empower your people learn to delegate learn to trust learn for them to have not only the responsibility but also the authority i think i want to go to the next slide because i can speak for days on, on these issues uh, what can we do to nurture the leadership among the girls and women that we are working with? I want to show you some of the statistics, some of the data, some of the results we got from the field uh, on some a few issues regarding who these women are that we are working with. When we did the baseline and the end line studies, certain questions were asked. And you will see the difference. On the slide here, you will see when we did the baseline study, we asked them what their understanding is of their social rights. And you will see the majority lean from poor to very poor, over 60%. After we did the training and the imparting the skills, we now see that the majority of them lean towards the positive size, side where they say the training impacted their life to learn more and understand the social rights. Uh, so more than 90% say some impact and significant impact. But if you divide those two, you will see 55% of those same girls say this training had a significant impact on my understanding of my social rights. The next slide talks about um, bank accounts, and we will see that 89% said they don't have a bank account. But now we see at the end line the, the results that came in, and we do not yet have all our results. This is a sample of what came in. But of that same group, there is now an increase where while, yes, I do not manage this account, 4%. 4.5% said at the beginning. Now 18.8% said I manage this account myself. So there's a huge change and shift in this. Uh, next slide, please. How would you describe your own ability to make decisions? This, this slide to me is very encouraging. Um, and I must thank Cherise for putting all the data together that came in from you and also for uh, Christina for making this beautiful slide to show to you how this change happened. When we did the baseline on them making the decision, uh, only 
41% said good. Now, 81% said good. But very good was 7%, and now it doubled very good. So both good and very good, there's a double, there's an increase on what they were. Next slide. Increasing participating family decision making. Here again, you will see 28% said they are somewhat empowered in making decisions in family. And here you see the training made an impact in them participating in family decision making. It changed to a significant impact of 51.6% says it made an impact. So they will now be able to make a family decision. We're not sure whether they will be empowered to make it, but we know that they have the tools to be part of that. Next one. So what can we do to nurture leadership among the girls and women? As evidenced by the previous slide, you can see that when we educated them, there is a difference. They need to be educated because some of these things they don't know. So they need to be educated so that they can, through being educated, empower themselves. That is very important. So we should continue to do that. And that is why wherever we can, we should educate women and girls. As leaders, we should educate these group of girls, not only to empower them in certain areas like skills, like sewing or brick making or um, make, uh, repairing telephones, but also on their social rights, also for them to know about their, their, their own health. Those are the things we need to educate them in so that they can feel confident. I did not talk about the confident characteristics, but if you are confident, it means you, if you want to be confident, you should have that information that you can send and go out there and talk. We should continue to be bridge builders. A bridge builder is, is those of us who reach out to each other in the promotion of a common cause. We should be bridge builders for women leadership. But role models is one of the things that apparently is lacking in many communities. Uh, if you remember the first, the second slide, I showed all these women from history who were there through all the ages. They are role models, but within your community, does the women have enough role models? I'm sure the answer is definitely no, because in most cultures and traditions, we find that the man is in the forefront, the man is the decision maker, the man is the person that they will always see. So they think it is right that the man is the leader. We should come out as women leaders and be the role models and talk to them and inspire them and guide them and motivate them. And more importantly, we should use their stories and tell these stories to other girls and women who are not yet where they are, so that through their stories, we can motivate more women to become leaders and we can nurture this leadership. You remember I said right in the beginning, we find leadership at different levels, within the community, within, within the family, within the friends, um, amongst the friends. So within that training, circle. There are leaders. Identify them, nurture them. Then I go to, I think, the last slide. And I'm asking this question. I came across this thing many years ago when I had to make a presentation to a women um, at a religious gathering. Uh, and my question is, do women have a competitive advantage? What is this thing that women have that men doesn't have? So there's my answer. 
Men over the ages had position power and women had influence power. So what do I mean by this? Women were put together. To, to, um, to be child bearers. So as a child bearer, you provide a nurturing and transforming environment for that unborn baby. So you influence that baby in many ways. I will not go into the detail of that. That is the one thing. When we look into the history, and because this was a religious group of women I spoke to in the Christian religion, uh, one of the things that I told them at that time, there is a story in the Bible about uh, Jesus who turned water into wine. But why did he do it? He did it because his mother influenced him. She went to him and she asked him to do it. So there's many examples that I can show you within the community, within the politics, a woman influence the decision of the man who sits in the position of power. In the household, in many households, what cultural tradition, we know the man is the head of the house. We know in the community, the man is the head of that community. But when that man goes back, he speaks to his wife and she influences the way he thinks. He may not agree with it, but let me tell you, this is exactly how it happens because he comes to this person that he trusts and she tells him. And in that way, you influence that person's thinking and that position basically is influenced by your thoughts. Now, I want to ask all the women to stop using the influence power to build somebody else's position, but to use your influence power to build your own position because you will be much stronger to have both position and influence power. Thank you. I think there are some minutes left a few minutes, not quite a number for some questions. I hope everybody could hear me. Thank you very much. All right, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Francis, for a very inspiring presentation. Um, I see you guys have been posting some comments in the chat, and I perhaps what Bob would like to share. Um, you made a really great comment about how leadership characteristics that Francis were describing uh, come from the inside and not outside. Perhaps you could share more about that. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Is Rafat proceed? Hello, Francis. How are you? Thank you for the always inspiring us for so long. It's been like you are the leader. You are the true leader. No doubt. We are so inspired by you. You are always inspiring. But this characteristic, and I have been looking at the slide. These characteristics are like, uh, as I have said, it comes from inside. You don't have to rely on other sources to become a uh, leader. Like women also uh, always in our community, they always rely to go outside with some men they have they are in uh, all decision the important decision in their lives are influenced by the men but these leadership qualities they can uh, they are like from uh, from inside you you can be confident from inside you can be influenced you can be empowered and these all characteristics you can build inside you you don't have to rely on others that's the best part and influencing uh on the idea and on the nature, on the decision of men, this is so true. That is why I always used to say, uh, when a female can turn, a, like a wife can turn a man uh, against his mother, so she can turn a boy again, 
in a in a better way to the uh, to the female to the gen uh, to have a more gender uh, equal society so women should like do something on this they can use their power for this in a better way thank you thank you so much for that also see we had quite a few comments on this idea of influence power um i see arush you really liked that point perhaps would you like to explain why you liked it Hello everyone, this is Arud from Bedari. Uh, thank you Francis and Krishna for arranging this uh, so informative uh, webinar for us because learning is always important and I believe that we are always learning no matter at what stage we are. And actually I really like this part because uh, men are always taught to exercise power. So that's why we can say that they always you know, exercise power, they don't influence others for that. We have seen so many men leaders who are so great, but they don't have last long uh, impacts on the society or on the people around them. But whenever we saw any women leader who has been given the opportunity to lead or who is being the person who is confident enough and empowered to lead, uh, lead others, is always leaving high impacts on the society regarding whatever she does, regarding women empowerment, regarding politics, regarding economic stability, or whatsoever she does has long-lasting influences. We can, uh, we can uh, clearly remember the inspiring women around us, but whenever we saw men, we always see them exercising power and not rather than influencing others to you know, follow them or ha take a very good lead. But women in 90% cases, we see that they are influencing others so much because women are always deprived, kept, uh, you know, in a very shell kind of thing. So, and they are not given an opportunity. So looking at the women leaders, we can say that, yeah, they influence power rather than exercising it on others. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Arush, for that very insightful comment. Um, Elizabeth, I also saw that you had commented on the influence power. Um, could you perhaps elaborate why you like it? Hello. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, everybody. I am in good conditions now to have comments. I just wanted to to say that that's true. We have uh, power that we don't we don't recognize, and women should be aware of this capacity and power that they have to influence. And uh, that's very true. I, I think. Oh, uh, it's patient. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Riel, I see your microphone is on. Did you want to comment? Hey, Jewel, somewhere, uh, sorry, I'm helping Christina here because I'm not sure whether you hear her. She wants you to talk. No, I hear you well. I had all the, the presentation and I must admit it's great. Um, but uh, I love the influence part because I can really uh, relate it down to my family. By your example, I could see my mom's influence on me and how I turned out to be uh, to perform well in school because of the encouragement and um, encouragement and the belief that she had in me by simply telling me the words that you can do it, go for it, you know. So I think if this is all used um, so well. The, the influence power is a lot better and it can do um, wonders and turn most of things around. We just need to have the women speak out. Uh, unfortunately, I was asking myself if the influence part of it is there, but the communication is a problem. For instance, like in Africa, women were uh, hardly speak in the public. It would take you quite, uh, it takes the women with courage to speak in public. Even the ones who are well-educated, most of them will tell you it's not our culture to speak in public, especially where women, uh, uh, in an event where men are, are dominant. 
Um, so I think like the influence part of it and communication should be encouraged among women and we could turn a lot of things around. Perfect. Thank you so much, Samuel. Um, Francis, I see if I'll a question for you, which I'll read out. Uh, out of your travel experience, do you have some more tips for women in developing countries in Pakistan? Yes, thank you for the question, but also want to uh, respond to Samuel's point about the communication. And thank you for those of you who have acknowledged and indeed own the issue of, of influence power as women, but for the males, I do acknowledge that because they can identify with it in their own upbringing and in their family. Um, it is important that women um, encourage to use this influence power to influence the policies, the traditions, and the cultures that prevent them from communicating, that prevent them from speaking in public. I know uh, exactly what uh, you are talking about, Samuel. Uh, in some cultures, not only in Africa, around the world, you will find them, that women have to be submissive, they shouldn't speak. And it is because of this that we have these women activists that we have organizations uh, like Progresso and ADPP and in Pakistan, Spark and Bidai, who were started up not only about the children, but the children's rights to speak, women's rights to speak. And it is important that we do this, we have to be patient. This will not change overnight because it is deep-rooted cultures that women are adhering to. But we hope in the next generation that these things will change because if I look at the millennials, those who were born just before we entered into this new millennium, they are quite outspoken and it's not that they disrespect the culture, but they are cognizant of the fact that we have to make a difference. This is, when you all are gone, we will still live in this world. So allow us to speak. And that is why it is important to nurture leadership amongst the young women and girls and to see how we can change this paradigm and make this shift from women being in the background for, to come to the forefront. When I visited the different countries and what I've observed is that definitely the leadership, for instance, in Pakistan of the human rights organizations, I can definitely say it pays, it paid off that the women uh, are not so submissive. Despite all the traditions and cultures, you can see they are confident, they are strong because they know their rights. So it is important to know that these changes can happen, but it cannot happen if I'm not educated about my rights, if I don't know what it is. So in some cultures, even an educated woman may not know what her social rights are. She may be educated in a specific field, she may be a teacher, but what does she know about her rights? Maybe she was not exposed to such teachings. So it is important that we influence the, the minds, the, the education uh, materials of these girls with the things that they should stand up for, the things that they should use to make a difference. Because if we do not allow them to make a difference, uh, as was said in the press statement, press release of UN Women and, and IPU, then achieving the SDGs are in jeopardy. So we, we have a very important role to play. More questions? Thank you, Francis. I think you had an interesting point about education material, and I know Mustafa had also posted a comment. Um, Mustafa, would you like to talk?
Hello. Hi, Mr. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, this is very, uh, thanks, Francis. It's a very nice presentation, and especially the, the two last two points I, I like very much. It's a position and influence power. So these two should go together. And if, yes, if uh, the position is not right now, uh, for example, uh, a woman, she is not in position, but she got the influence power. I think uh, in uh, different cultures, some cultures are very open, some cultures are mixed, and some cultures are uh, closed, like uh, our cultures. So in this type of cultures, leadership actually uh, is a matter, but they got the influencing power. So sometimes they don't use it. So what Francis said, I'm uh, very much uh, uh, convinced that uh, this is uh, a way they can, the woman can start. They can they got the influence power, and in every they have a huge influence. They can change a, a lot of things. And also, uh, since the culture is very much rigid, so there should be leadership. Otherwise, in the leadership, if the woman is not there, then it it, it becomes very difficult. So in our country. You know, the, since the prime minister speaker is uh, they are the female, so uh, they can influence a lot of things. And in a lot of organizations now, the head of the institutions are for, uh, female. So it was not the fact before. So I think uh, it's a very nice point that influencing power and uh, position both are important for the cultures like ours. Because uh, if we like to have a rapid change in this kind of societies, so it is very important. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mustafa. Um, Elizabeth, you also posted a fantastic comment on education and training for women, saying that it needs creativity, complex problem solving, confidence, and communication. Um, would you like to add anything to that? Perhaps she's not online. Does anyone else have any other comments or questions? <clears throat> Perfect. I see, I see your mic is on. Did you want to comment? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank uh, you and uh, Francis uh, for uh, for uh, giving a really nice response to my query because. Uh, uh, because the women from development sectors in, um, uh, in in countries like Pakistan and South Asia, they all look forward to those from the developed countries. So I think there's a need to break the taboo of silence. And uh, South Asia could be right on track uh, once we have educated mothers who can empower their girls. And instead of shunning the girls and asking them to sit at home, we can ask them to go out and explore the world for themselves. So overall, it's a good learning experience for me. Um, thanks a lot for uh, um, arranging it for us. Thank you. I think um, I I want to to add to what Atiya said, but then I just noted Mazi wrote something about role role models uh, because my response actually uh, to Atiya and I will ask Mazi to speak after me. Um, my response to Atiya was also now to say uh, the issue of role models and you who are the leaders within your organizations it is important that you go out and become stronger role models be more visible and that you ensure that the girls and women in your uh, training units that you encourage them to become more visible to become role models and that is why I say telling the stories of, of them. So why do we think uh, Malaya? Everybody talks about her. She's become the face for women's education. She's become a role model. Everybody wants to aspire to have her courage. So if we put our girls out there on social media and about their courage and how strong they are, don't you think other girls would want to be to aspire to be like them, to like them, and if they aspire to be like them, we will have many girls that will become stronger and become leaders. That is the 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 the, the effect of role modeling. If you see, and that is why 
uh, all these years when we grew up, people would ask, who's your role model? And at that time, what is a role model? So it is also important that we explain, and you would talk about a movie star, and most of the children, myself, didn't have a clue, and I would say, my mom, my dad, because those are the people I admire to be, and that is a perfect role model. But if my mom is very submissive and she doesn't talk, she may still be a good role model in certain areas, but we are talking here about role model in leadership, taking the lead, uh, going out there and making a difference. Mzi, did you want to say something about it? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, good morning, Francis, and good evening, everyone. Good morning. I, I just wanted to, to highlight two key issues that I, 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 I am hopeful that we will take out from this presentation. One of them, which, was, uh, which has been articulated by the other speakers before me, is the issue of uh, the power to influence that women have. I'm hoping that uh, we'll have women leaders in the whole influencing changes, especially around uh, traditional practices like the female genital mutilation, the, the role of women in the home, because that is where the confidence of a woman can start. But if the women are as leaders in those traditional rights are the ones that are perpetuating a practice that is not working, they are giving away the power and you know, it's, it's going to take us a longer time to achieve some of the uh, emancipations of girl children that you are aspiring to achieve. So I was wondering uh, if in, uh, in India or Pakistan or Bangladesh, one of those countries, what has been the experiences of uh, in, the, in the fight against those issues? Okay, thanks so much, Mizzy. Um, I think your audio at the end kind of cut in and out. Could you repeat your final question? Now I'm saying that it will be interesting to, to, to hear, maybe in another, in another uh, conversation or in another session, how countries like Tanzania, where I know that the issue of uh, female genital mutilation is very large, how are the leaders, you know, women community leaders, uh, standing up to those uh, issues, and how do they manage to lose their leadership to overcome or to make an influence uh, to change behaviors of, of men uh, that are uh, perpetuating that practice? Perfect. Thank you so much, Nizi. Yeah, I think that's a really great discussion that we can continue to have later on the community of practice. Um, you know, we have about three minutes left scheduled, so I think it's probably enough for one more comment. Thank you, Christina. Yes, I, I think we did a very good summary of the way forward by Christina there. The issue just raised by uh, Z. Uh, is a question that I think Mustafa is the person bringing together the post-webinar discussion in uh, a blog. For us to pose that question there, just raised by Z, and see how we can further del deliberate on it within the community of practice. I will definitely also make my contribution. So for us to see within our countries, uh, how women has you have used their influence power to make changes within traditional practices. And if we have a role in that, if we have a role in that, I want to conclude by talking about uh, one of the characteristics which I didn't talk about, and that is generosity. Uh, as a leader, it is important to be generous about giving of yourself. So give the best of yourself to build up others and help them grow as individuals. Do not ever hesitate to give of yourself to other people. 
uh, sort of to become an organic person because the more you give the more of you will be there in the world um, in my previous life I was a teacher and I always said as teachers we are very privileged because we are influencing the world in ways we cannot imagine because each child that goes through your classroom doors that you teach each of them something of you goes into that child something of you goes so as your children leave your class every year you have a new group something of you goes into those children they take that into the world and so it continues so your leadership your goodwill, your integrity, anything that you can share with the girls, the boys, the community within you, which you work, the organization, be generous, give that, and we will all see in many, many years from now a much better world with many more leaders amongst the girls and boys who are now within our communities where we are having our sessions. Uh, I think that is my concluding remarks. Thank you very much for listening to me and thank you very much for your participation in the session, your contributions. As usual, we will share with you the webinar as well as the notes, the chats, so that you can go through it again because some of you may not have read all the comments that came in. But thank you very much. Thank you to um, Christina for facilitating the session, for making these beautiful slides for me. I did not make it. I delegated it and I used um, what is the characteristic of a leader, empowerment, and I empowered her to be her and I gave her not only the responsibility but also the authority. I did not change any of her slides except for here and there the text that I've given her. So thank you so much, Christina. Thank you, Cherise, who has signed out of this role since Christina started um, for your moral support here this morning to the team also and for being here. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the session. Um, enjoy your evening. Goodbye.